What is up guys, it's Brindy Meister here and welcome to today's video. If you do enjoy the video then don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe and hit all the links up down below to Twitch and Discord. Enjoy the video! In today's video we're going to go across uh, sort of useful PVM unlocks. So this is aimed at people that have done a bit of PVM and got a bit of money in a decent level but want to sort of progress to being able to do some higher level PVM or more solo level PVM. So I've broken it down into three categories and that is abilities, gear upgrades and skill unlocks. So I'm not going to have any massively high level stuff in here but there's also not going to be any like really low level stuff. So it's going to be aimed at people that are trying to progress into decent level PVM. So on the screen now we have a lot of the useful unlockable abilities. Um, so some of them are free and some of them you're going to have to pay for but a majority of them can be unlocked for free with a little bit of time investment. Uh, so the first two are Death Swiftness and Sunshine and they're both unlocked with the World Wakes quest. They're unlocked alongside a few other abilities but the other abilities have kind of more niche uh, applications rather than being generally good for PVM. And Death Swiftness and Sunshine are both sort of like berserk and they do like a big square or circle where if you stand inside it you'll get increased damage but it doesn't have the downside like berserk where it'll take increased damage as well but the damage increase isn't as good so they're definitely really good abilities to unlock if you are going to be doing range or magic. Bladed Dive is unlockable through Shattered Worlds and is really good for mobility and is often been put on a switch uh, rather than your main hand weapon just so you can move around very easily. Uh, Devotion and Sacrifice is unlocked via the Anima Islands, which is on the corpse of Tusker uh, in the desert. You can access him, and it's through a mini game, and they're 3,500 points each, and they take about an hour each to unlock. However, most of you will probably have these already unlocked as they are a rare drop from God Wars Dungeon 1 bosses. The ones that you have to pay for are Onslaught, Corruption Shot, and Corruption Blast. However, you can unlock these for free if you do raids and get the drop. However, it is easier just to buy a uh, Mazcab Ability Codex off the Grand Exchange. Corruption Shot and Corruption Blast are the same ability, but a range and mage counterpart, and are definitely one of the best ones here, as it's a very high damage in basic ability. And then you have Onslaught, which is a bit of a niche ability, but it's, um, it's one that is very, very useful in certain circumstances, such as the Blood Phase at Nex. And then the last set of useful unlockable abilities is the Tendrils abilities. Um, they're all nice high hitting threshold abilities, however they do damage you. So again, their uses are a little bit niche, but they are very, very easy to unlock. All you have to do is do the Dig Site quest, and if you have 75 in the relative stats, you can use the Codex, and then they're all unlocked. So the first useful item that we've got here is the Blood Amulet. So I've chosen the Blood Amulet of Fury here, but you can get a uh, damage specific one for melee, one for mage, and one for range. And that's just because it has a passive healing effect, which will not only help you a lot during Slayer, um, but it will also help a lot at some of the lower tier and mid tier bosses. Uh, so all of the God War Dungeon 2 bosses, all of the first God Wars ones, Calfight King, Corporal Beast, Dagonoff, Raze, all those it all counts at. And... Um, it's a lot cheaper than an Amulet of Souls, and it's a very good amulet to get you going uh, before you start upgrading to some of the Hydrix jewellery, which is a lot more expensive and a lot more pricey to maintain as well. So next up on the useful gear upgrades are Tier 90 weapons. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to get the Noxious ones, they're just the ones I've got for photos. Uh, Melee has Drygors, which are very, very cheap. Um, Magic, Nox's, Nox uh, staff is the cheapest one for that, and... Uh, Nox Bow is pretty similar to Ascensions, but Dry Gores are substantially cheaper if you do choose to go for melee. And if you can't afford them, you know the tier 85 stuff from God Wars Dungeon 2 is still pretty good for PVM as it has tier 90 accuracy, which is the main thing is increasing your accuracy over the tier 80 weapons. Third up on the list of useful gear unlocks is the Enhanced Excalibur. So this one's actually free, it's not going to cost you any money. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time. So you unlock the first one from Merlin's Crystal, which I'm guessing everybody will have unlocked. And then if you do the hard achievements of Sears Village, you unlock the enhanced version, which is pretty good. Heals you for 4% of your max life five times over 20 seconds. And then if you do the elite diaries, then it's basically the effect is doubled and it heals double the amount over double the time, which is absolutely amazing and is really, really good for taking to bosses just for that extra bit of free healing. So last up on the recommended sort of items to get is your armor. So I'd recommend 
tier 80 armors, so there's various ones you can get. You can either go for the next armors, so like your Pernix, your Torva, or your Virtus. And the other option is to go for the Anima Core armors from God Wars Dungeon 2. So stat-wise, they provide exactly the same bonuses. The only difference is the next armors provide a nice boost in life points as well, which is always nice. Cinderbane Gauntlets are another really, really good upgrade. However, they are a bit more on the pricey side, about 45 mil at the time of recording this. But for anything that's poisonable, they're pretty much the best gloves in the game, as they add a weapon poison effect, and it does stack with weapon poison, so it does add a lot of extra DPS, and they're a very, very nice hybrid glove to have. So on screen now, you can see an example of like a base melee setup. So you might want to change this, depending on the boss you're doing, to have a different aura, a scrimshaw, etc. in it. Um, so what I'm using is Masterwork Armor because it is a very similar price to the tier 80 armors for melee. Um, the, the other combat styles don't really have a worthwhile equivalent to this, so the tier 80s are the ones you want. Whereas Masterwork's a good uh, good alternative and is about the same price. Cinderbane Gloves and I'm using a Noxious Scythe for my weapon. However, if you want and you want to downgrade it, you can always downgrade to a Dragon Rider Lance or Drygors if you want to dual wield. I'm using my Blood Amulet, and that is pretty much it for this setup, other than the fact that I'm wearing a Luck of the Dwarves, but you can pretty much change that out to any ring you want, as and when you want. So next we're moving on to the Example Magic setup. So here I'm again using Tier 90 Weapon, which is the Noxious Staff. I would personally recommend this over the um, Seismix. However, if you really want them, you can go for the Seismix, and if you want a cheaper alternative, the Obliteration Staff is a Tier 87 Staff, and it's very very cheap comparatively I think it's about 40 mil um, so here I'm using full Virtus um, you can use anima core if you want that's another tier 80 armor um, it just doesn't have the life point bonus uh, large room pouch is a pretty decent investment um, they're quite expensive but they're quite worth it because I've got in here vulnerability runes and my normal casting runes you can also put alks or something in it if you're doing it for slayer and again I got the cinderman gloves just because they're for most things best in slot and I have got my Luck of the Dwarves just for that extra drop chance. Um, you can sub in your Scrimshaw and your Aura as needed for whatever boss you're doing. So now moving on to my example range setup. And this is a little bit upgraded from what is necessary. But it's a nice next tier up. And we've gone again for tier 90 armor here. But it's the Sirenic which is a degradable armor. So I definitely only recommend it for like the higher level t uh, PVM. You can use Anima Core or Pernix for anything where you don't want to make your degrade costs too expensive. Um, but if you're doing something like starting a Raxor with range or doing Nex or something like that, then it's definitely worth it getting the Serenic. Um, so again, this is a base setup, so you can use whatever Scrimshaw and Aura you want. And um, I'm using my uh, Cinderbane Gloves and a Tier 90 weapon as well. However, they do have a Decimation Bow, which is a Tier 87 bow, which is a lot cheaper and fairly similar in damage and accuracy to the Nox bow and you could also downgrade to using something like a tier 85 shadow glaives and that's even cheaper again and as always I'm using my luck ring here but you can use whichever ring you want for whatever scenario you may be in. So the first skilling unlock that is kind of worthwhile getting is Herblore. Um, so obviously overloads, super, uh, super anti-fires are sort of really good ways to get started but then it keeps going up and you can get supreme overloads, supreme overload salves and even recently released with the new 120 herbler update you can get elder overload salves which provide a nice boost again over just overloads but I would say that getting overloads is definitely a nice place to start if you want to get more into PVM as they're a massive increase over being able to use like super potions or like a warmeister potion and all that sort of stuff. The next useful unlock is prayer uh, so you want to unlock your curses, which is unlocked through Temple of the Sensitin quest. It's a fairly mid-level quest, which you should be able to unlock quite easily. And then you want to have 95 prayer for turmoil, and you'll be able to unlock soul split. And then uh, a bit later down the line, you want to unlock the 99 prayers. However, they are like 500 mil each, so that will be a bit further down the line. But it's something nice to aim for. But the tier 95, turmoil, etc. are a very nice starting off place. And having Soul Split as well definitely helps with a lot of med-level PVM. Next up is Invention. And nowadays that's probably one of the most important ones. And it can increase your damage by a massive amount if you have the right perks on your armour. I'm not going to go in-depth onto what sort of perks you should use here. But just 
if you have got the right PVM perks on, then they massively increase your damage. And the same with if you've got uh, enhanced, devoted, and stuff like that on your armor, you can massively decrease the amount of damage you take as well. And it provides such a huge boost for PVM that it's almost a necessity for most high level PVM nowadays. So this last unlock is not technically a skill unlock, although you do need level 90 in one of the port skills to be able to unlock ports. But it is a bit of a grind and it's something you have to do daily to eventually be able to unlock them and gather all the materials. And that is getting the ancient bones and getting the scrolls to unlock some of the useful scrimshaws. The scrimshaws through ports are really really good because they're not only a little bit more powerful than the ones you can buy on the grand exchange, like the same equivalent of them. Um, they also last for an hour longer and obviously they don't cost you any money because you're making them yourself off the um, ports materials rather than buying them on the Grand Exchange for a few mil each. Thank you very much for watching, anyone that's managed to watch all the way to the end here, I really hope this guide did help you. Um, if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like as I did put a lot more ed editing time into this and hope that it has increased the quality of the video that much more so you guys can enjoy it more. Don't forget to subscribe if you did enjoy the video and also hit up the links down below to join my Discord server and follow along on Twitch. Until next time, see ya!